Ah, mother. Ever heard the saying, it doesn't have to be fun to be fun? Well, I'm pretty sure they were talking about climbing, and in this case, our bikes. However hard and grueling those big climbs might seem while you're in the action, they usually lead to pretty awesome descents. So I guess in the end, it is fun. Previously, we talked about good body position while climbing your bike, and I hope you've been working on that either on the trails or on the indoor trainer, because today we're digging in deeper. We're gonna talk about really important stuff like when to be in what gear, how much power to push to make sure you actually finish the whole ride, and line choices. There's usually a ton of them. It's a really slippery single track behind me today, so wish me luck. We're gonna see what I'm made of. It's a good idea not to go too easy or too hard on the gears. Obviously though, that's gonna depend on you, your fitness, your skills on the bike, and what line you're riding that day. Plan ahead so that you're not jamming a bunch of gears in right before a steep climb, or vice versa, you're not spinning like a hamster in a wheel, but we're gonna cover that a bit more in depth when we go on to line choice shortly. I just found this nice punchy section of climbing trail just behind me here, and I'm standing on a really good flat section of trail to shift some gears. But what gear should I be in? For this particular section, I'm gonna go with a slightly harder gear because I wanna carry momentum up this climb right after it. It's a bit of a flat traversing section of trail. So the more momentum I can carry up, the better I'm gonna do in the long run. All right, a little bit of a quick pitch here. So I'm gonna shift into my third gear and bring it up. Whew. All right, just made it through that techy little punchy section of trail. And I can see from here, it's a bit smoother and a bit flatter. So it's an awesome opportunity to go into that easier gear, get the leg speed up and think spin it to win it. Longer climbs, much like this one behind me, are where cyclists prefer to usually have an easier gear and a higher cadence to prevent the buildup of lactic acid. Try not to drop your cadence too low at any point on the climb to make sure your body is working aerobically. This is gonna be a huge help in building endurance in the long run. All right, now the only way to get better at climbing is to actually do it. So ride in all the conditions, that way you're ready for anything that comes your way, slippery routes, dry, dusty forest service roads, or tight switchbacks. Terrible fitness will not have you feeling like a champ on those single track climbs. So turn your one lap into three with a little endurance practice. So we've just gotten to this slightly wide bit of climbing trail here, and same with descending. When you're climbing the trail, it's super important to look where you're going. Pick little points on the trail, little markers that you want to get to. Kind of think of it as like a little carrot that you're chasing maybe. You get to that point, pick the eyes back up and carry on. All right, we're going main line with confidence here. I've got two little corners picked out as my markers. Eyes are up. Found this perfect little example here to talk about line choices on the trail. Um, this one in particular, I can already see, I'm gonna be following this main line right here through the tunnel with my front wheel so that I'm crossing the route perpendicular. Less chance of my front wheel sliding out and my rear wheel as well. I've got my line chosen here. I'm gonna cross the route perpendicular with a little wheelie motion just there. And if you find yourself on a much steeper section of trail, do be careful, because if you throw yourself into a little wheelie, could find yourself going way backwards down the trail. So we've stumbled upon this series of tight switchbacks here. My pro tip on this one, because it is quite tight, is to take the trail a little bit wider than you think you need to. I'm actually gonna climb riders left of this rock here, which gives me just enough room to line the bike up straight ahead. I'm gonna be able to get over that little root ball, no problems. However, if that's too easy for you and you want a little more excitement in your life, you can actually do a little trials maneuver as demonstrated by... <laughs> where you literally hop on trail to create balance, keep yourself upright, and then you've actually got a nice straight line ahead. Oh yeah! Steeper and more technical sections of trail, like this little bad boy here, are times when you're probably gonna wanna use that thrusting movement that we've talked about before. 
I like to do that to bring my body weight forward on the bike, especially as you're going up a steep bit of trail. And it also lets the rear wheel track up and over all these yucky little obstacles. This is an awesome reminder of why you should practice pedaling while standing and do some rear wheel lifts because they make a huge difference. Ah! <laughs> oh my God, I'm not even clipped in. <sighs> and then you dab. All right, that last little impossible climb, not gonna lie, it was a bit tough for me, but I found one that I think I can conquer, this little baby here. Same rules apply though. I'm probably gonna have to get out of the saddle on this one to make that punchy maneuver up and over this rock here. I'm gonna shift the body weight forward and let the rear wheel track up and over. I can do this, you can do this. Yeah. Well, we made it to the top of something. It only took all day to get here, but hopefully the tips and reminders that I shared along the way on gearing, cadence, line choice, they're gonna help you turn climbing into a fun activity. Maybe you'll even love it so much you nip down to the bike shop and grab a fresh Lycra kit for your cross country bike. I don't know, man, you do you. But hopefully you've got some legs and lungs to spare for another lap out on your next big day. And as for me, I think it's time to drop in. Thank you.